Stone Turner is an incredibly forgotten Pokemon, but if used correctly, it can actually be a threat. Its base 125 attack, along with solid HP and defense stats, give it an opportunity to be a beast in physical situations. Unfortunately, with its abysmal base 20 special defense, it really hinders what it can do. But if you can set up an iron defense, which raises your defense by two stages, paired with body press, it can do massive damage while being an insane physical wall. Body press is a move that uses your defense stat as attack and damage calculation. So just after one iron defense, Stone Genre can pop off. Alright, look, the moral of the story, our little stack stone fella does not nearly get enough love. So I'm here to help the homie out. And if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k. It'll only take you a second. I promise you won't regret it. And let's go ahead and get into the match. Alright, so the team that I'm working with is based around sticky web support. So I decided to lead off with the Vicavolt, who's here with the Focus Ash to basically set up those webs, as my opponent leads off with the Cinderace. So I find myself in a situation where I don't really want to set up the sticky web here. This thing can basically pyro ball and knock me to my sash and then potentially court change the sticky webs back over to my side, so I decided I'm going to save those for later. There's a time and a place, and against Cinderace, we ain't playing that. So I decided to switch into the Sand Slash. Now, I consider going into the Stone Joiner, but I'm worried about them going for a first turn pivot with a U-turn, which is pretty likely. However, they do just go for the Pyro Ball, throw a flaming Soccer Ball at me, and since I'm more of an offensive-oriented Sand Slash, I'm not able to actually take two of those. So, unfortunately, Sand Slash looks like I'm in a situation where I kind of just have to sack here. So I am going to be down one from the start here, which is not the end of the world, but not the greatest start we're looking for. They do end up going for the Iron Head to finish me off. Down goes the Sand Slash that loses me my Stealth Rock support. But what it does do is now opens the door uh, to make something happen. So here's what I'm thinking. I could go actually into a couple different options. I decide to go Empoleon. Now, I figure that even though this thing transformed into the Steel type with its ability, I can still actually kind of force a pivot here. And expecting them to U-turn, I'm going to go for a flip turn of my own. So they do actually go for that U-turn, which is amazing. And the slower pivot here is going to allow me a matchup into whatever they decide to go into. So it turns out to be the Baxcalibur, and this thing is an absolute monster of a threat. And I need to do something about this boy quickly, or else it gets yeah, a little bit out of hand here. So I go for that flip turn here, and this allows me a pivot into my answer, which comes in the form of Banette. Also, another forgotten Pokemon that... Uh, really just kind of fell into obscurity because there's just so many better ghost type options. But what this Banet can do is expecting this thing to set up, I can go for the Encore. And they fall right into the trap here. Pretty much every Baxcalibur is going to be some type of setup here. Uh, and I can Encore that Swords Dance. So now he's stuck into the Swords Dance. And it's actually a really cool Banet set. It's meant to be Cursed Body, so they have to hit me. Uh, it then disables them and then I can Encore him into that and then start to set up myself. But uh, just being able to force the Baxcalibur out is good enough for me, and now I can go for a nice little knockoff on whatever they decide to bring in, and it turns out to be Ursaluna. So, again, another extremely scary Pokemon that has a pretty high chance of uh, making some stuff happen. I go for that knockoff and actually get rid of the Flame Orb, which is actually amazing because now this thing's not going to have its guts, and it kind of really hinders what this thing can do. So the knockoff, super clutch there, but now I decide to switch out here. I'm going to go right into the Stone Journal. We come in with our big ass thick ass legs and I'm floating in the air with the air balloon which is important because now I can come in for free on that earthquake so I don't know what kind of how many balloons it would take to hold up this fella but apparently you only need one so now at this point he has to hit me with any other attack to be able to pop the balloon which then allows him to uh, be able to hit me with that super effective earthquake however I'm just gonna go for that iron defense here get them defenses sky high goes for that heavy slam super effective damage does pretty much nothing but it does pop my balloon and rain on my parade. So at this point, I'm actually just gonna go for the Terra fighting and now with my defense stat being honestly insane, it's gonna be a super powerful body press, especially with the Terra fighting. That's what I mean with this Pokemon. If you can come in on a purely physical attacker and gain some momentum like this, it can actually be uh, really annoying to deal with and it kinda just becomes a powerhouse pretty quickly. So I do actually outspeed because Ursaluna is about slow as hell, did not even need my sticky webs. And the body press is just going to take care of the bear. So that is a huge threat out of the way. Ursaluna is always just an issue. And uh, now they get a revenge switch into whatever they like. And they decide to go into Baxcalibur. Now, obviously this dude knows that a body press is coming. So what I'm going to do is actually predict a Terra and go for an Earthquake instead. Where he actually does end up going for the Terra. And it actually ends up working out pretty nicely because he goes for the Terra Electric. To my surprise, the Earthquake turns into an insane play. And he puts a light bulb on his head, but... The reason why I didn't go for the Stab Rock Blast is because since I know that a Terra is coming, it's either going to be something like a Terra Ghost or a Terra Ground. I figured Earthquake is just kind of a safe option and should just do a bunch of damage regardless. But 
Uh, it works out extremely nice, and it, I honestly got lucky on that as he goes for a sword stance, trying to set this thing up with the sword stance. Now he can go for the scale shot, um, and even with that loaded dice, if he does get the five hits, we're still able to live because, listen, this thing's defense is actually insane, and hitting this on the physical side is just not going to work out for you. It does get the four hits, but old Rocky Thighs is now going to take care of its uh, second big threat of the game. So important to note, they do have an answer to this thing in the form of Fluttermane in the back. But I imagine they probably just figured they could get through the stones just before having to use that thing. A lot of the time, Fluttermane is going to come in and activate its booster energy. So if you set it up too early in a match, it can just not work out for you. So I figured they're going to bring that thing in at this point. But instead, it ends up being the Cinderace. So the Cinderace, at the health that I'm at, I should be able to take an attack here. They do go for the high jump kick. Uh, and with that libero, it's going to change it into the fighting type, and I am just barely able to live that. However, I do go for the rock blast, and since this thing is a fighting type, it's going to be able to live that nicely. Um, I just figured if it went for anything like a pyro ball, it's kind of its best damage output. If it, did, if it didn't high jump kick against the Empoleon, I figured it didn't have something like that. But at this point, it is what it is. Stone Journey has done his job, and I'm just going to go for the body press here. They actually end up going for the Iron Head, reluctant to miss the high jump kick or predicting the switch into... Uh, something like the Banet. I'm actually able to live that and I end up finishing it off with a body press critical hit. Now, body press does about 70% to the thing, so it ends up taking it care of it regardless. And now finally the beast that is Fluttermane is going to come in. So it's a classic case of them underestimating the Stone Journey at this point, but now finally Fluttermane comes in. Uh, especially with that Protosynthesis and speed, it's going to be faster than everything on my team and it hits like a damn truck. So obviously I just have to leave old stack in here and they are just gonna finish me off with a Moonblast here. But that is fine. I was able to break their team super nicely with this thing. I did commit my Terra, but also forced them to. And at this point, I do have an answer uh, for the rest of their team. Now the remaining Pokemon are gonna be this Fluttermane along with the Hisuian Samurott and even a King Gambit. So I'm looking like there's an opening for the Heracross to be able to kind of uh, finish off this game in a sweep. However, I have this threat in front of me and I need to figure out an answer to it. So here's the plan. I decided to go into the Vikavolt and I'm going to get up the sticky web here knowing that I can take an attack. I am Focus Ash. Um, they go for the Mystical Fire, which I am able to live and now I can set up my sticky web. So anything else that comes in at this point, Heracross will now be faster than and should be able to finish off the game with a close combat. But now I need to figure out an answer to the Flutter main. But I have actually one of the perfect answers to this thing. And that is going to be the Assault Vest Empoleon. So, Vikavolt goes down, but I was able to set up the sticky webs that I need. And now I can go right into the Empoleon. So, the plan is, with the Assault Vest, since this thing doesn't have a special attack boost, I should be able to take close to like three attacks from this thing. And then all I need to do is get as much damage as possible with the Surf. So, they go for the Shadow Ball here. And as you're going to see, Assault Vest Empoleon barely scratches Homeboy. And we take that super nicely. Where a Surf is unfortunately not going to quite do half. So... I'm just going to continually fire off Surfs here. I do believe I can outlive uh, kind of this matchup here. And the good news also is potentially when they go for Shadow Balls, uh, they have the chance for the Special Defense Drop, which would activate like, competitive, but doesn't end up happening. And I actually end up getting a crit with our final Surf. So crits all over the damn place. I don't think it actually ended up mattering, but the important thing is Fluttermane is gone. And now they have the two Pokemon left where Heracross sees a nice little opening, especially with the Sticky Web. We will be faster. So in comes the Hazuian Samurai here. Gonna finish me off with that Sacred Sword. That is fine. Empoleon basically needed to be traded for that Fluttermane. And that's exactly what we need to do. So now I've set up my late game exactly how I needed to with the Sticky Web. And Heracross should be able to finish this one off. They do not have any Terra in the back pocket. And we love when the greatest bug is our win condition here. So we come in looking nice and purple. And all I have to do, this is actually a loaded dice set where... I decided to go for the pin missile, don't want to risk getting a defense drop from the close combat, uh, knowing that obviously 4 to 5 hits of pin missile will take this thing out. Down goes the Samurott, thank you to the sticky web. Uh, we actually both have base 85 uh, speed, however I'm actually running adamant on this thing because of the sticky web, so luckily able to outspeed that thing, and now the final Pokemon is going to be the King Gambit. So we get our nice little moxie boost, and it's to the point where yeah, a close combat right to the old face is not going to be fun. And I'll tell you what, there's not much more satisfying than seeing King Gambit not able to do much. Gets caught up in a sticky web, they do have the Supreme Overlord, which gives him power from the Fallen, but uh, a close combat is just going to be able to finish off the game here, and that is going to be the end of it. So definitely some misplays, uh, certainly on both ends, but regardless, still just a fun match. I'm just over here, I'm just here to have a good time just playing around, and you know, it is what it is. So thank you guys so much for watching, as always, the support is greatly appreciated, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.